Good afternoon, everybody. For the one or two of you who don't know me, my name is Brian Walters. I'm not talking to the camera, I'm talking to you all. I've already started it, by the way. My day job is, well, I have several jobs as a journalist. can you not understand that? But <laughs> <laughs> I am, in terms of cricket, I am the Central West Regional Representative. But in terms of the Austin League, I kind of have an unofficial title, which is a bar trainer. Simply because <clears throat> I like to think that I have a good idea of what it takes to be a good umpire. By the way, the one thing I want everybody to take away from this, being a good umpire does not, I repeat, does not mean getting every call right. Right? Being a good umpire means being able to manage the game, manage the people, and ensure that the spirit of cricket is available. Nothing more, nothing less. UDRS tells you that nobody in this planet or on this planet is without blame in terms of making mistakes. So you cannot be expected to get every single call right. But the bottom line is, you are a manager and the official of the game. And that is your role, and that's when you sign up to be an umpire in CTC, or that's what you're signing up for. Okay? I'm gonna fly through, oh, I'll fly through this. There are a lot of things that if you've heard me talk about this before, will be a little bit different. Uh, we'll talk, I'll highlight them when they come up. But for those of you who have not heard this before, this is, in my mind, the minimum amount that you need to know to be able to officiate a game in the league. And if you don't mind writing my email address down, <coughs> I'm perfectly open to either answering questions by email if it comes down to that, or if it's that easy, or if you'd like for me to sit and talk with you, or for those of you who are captains, if you've identified anybody on your team who you'd like for me to sit and talk with about this, I'm perfectly happy to do it. Okay, okay agenda, attire, pre-match activities, that is going to be a huge one today especially for those of you who were in the captain's meeting yesterday. Game of management, positioning, signals, and the kids had a little bit of fun with that, so you will see when we get there. Miscellaneous specific rules, I want to spend some time on the LBW, I want to spend some time on some things that I know in this league we absolutely get wrong, you have no idea about, or just completely don't know what the rule is concerning that issue, but we'll talk about talk about the square leg umpire that is probably our second biggest opportunity. Square leg umpire basically is the person right now is the person who drew the short straw. Goes up there, kills five overs and comes back. And it goes a little bit deeper than that. Then we'll have a test and no other whoever gets the questions right does not get the spats. <laughs> this is only <laughs> this is only my problem. <laughs> okay, attire. For the 35 or 30 over season, where we're playing with a red ball and white clothing, you need to look exactly like I look right now. Well, <coughs> you need to be dressed like I'm dressed right now. Uh, I don't care long sleeve or short sleeve, that's completely up to you. I absolutely care about long pants versus short pants. I've seen too many people show up umpiring. If you'll believe this, I was playing in a match where somebody showed up, it was a green and red ball, he showed up wearing a red tank top and orange shorts, right? You literally lose the respect of anybody in the game when you show up looking like you're not intending to take it seriously. Because nobody's gonna take you seriously as an umpire if you're not yourself serious about it. So white pants, sorry, white shirt and black pants in the 20 hour season where we go like to colored clothing, white balls, then it's a red shirt, a black shirt is also acceptable and still black pants, right? Hopefully nothing controversial there. Please take note of this for all of you. Umpires will not be paid for umpiring if they're not in the appropriate dress code. So in the past it was just, you really should do better. Now the umpire will not be paid at all if they're not in dress code, okay? Please let I'm assuming that hopefully most of the people in this room will be the ones umpiring, but if somebody else from the club is umpiring, other than who's represented in here, let them know that. It's not just required, it's they will not be paid. And by the way, if they get mad and turn around and say, oh, I'm going home, then if I'm not going to be paid, then your team loses the points. Okay? It's a really, really serious issue, please. 
Equipment. A watch. Critical. We'll talk about that. A ball counter. Everybody knows what this thing is, right? I've seen people use six rocks that they picked up off the ground. As long as you can tell me at any point if I'm over, how many over, how many balls I have left, and you can tell me what over we're in and how many we get to down, it doesn't really matter exactly what tool you use. This is about to be the easiest way of keeping up with all that. Score counter. This is something that we do in this league that many people or many leagues don't, but we require it in our league. You have to have a mechanism for keeping up with the total score. And just, oh, I usually, in fact, not usually, I always use one of these by that academy for $8 or something. So we just keep up the total score. I have had people try to umpire using an entire scorebook, right? The big 8 by 16 scorebook. I wouldn't recommend that, but at least have something that would allow you to keep up the total score. You want to just, for example, hold on to a, a notepad and make strokes or whatever it is. Whatever you're most comfortable with for the bottom line is you have to keep up with the total score. And at the end of each over, you confirm audibly with the scorers so everybody knows that everyone is on the same page. Okay? Notepad and pen. I'll explain why that's important in a while. Nail clip. Why would I need the nail clip? Catch the ball. Because <laughs> the nails weren't quite done right last time. <laughs> This might be the only bat that I have that doesn't have cord <laughs> around the bottom of it. If a batsman has cord around the bottom of the bat and it starts coming off, you don't want to delay the game while he goes and tries to have that cut off. It's a three second opportunity for you to take care of that. The seams are being raised on the ball. Let's snip it in there. Okay? Just comes in handy. Optional. I'm not trying to be anybody's parent, but if you're up in the sun for seven hours, you're probably going to want to have a hat on. You know, right now it feels comfortable, you can be out there for seven hours. In August, bad idea. Okay. Sunglasses. I want to stress sunglasses because especially um, at RCC's ground and HCCA, the, the, um, the pitches were laid relatively recently. And sometimes if the sun is hitting it just right, there's a sheen on it that will cause you to either A, not be able to see the wide lines, and B, lose the ball. You don't want to have somebody peel for LBW and you have no idea where the ball was. Okay? Not out. Hmm? Not out. <laughs> <laughs> Find out if you didn't see it, you can't give it. But I'd hate for that to be the reason why you didn't see it. Right. Um, I'm guessing a red hat is not allowed? Or is that that? If you are in 35 over season or 20 over season? 35. 35? No, absolutely not. Obviously, the main reason why you have a color a white shirt is because you don't want the bowler or the batsman. batsman. Mm -hmm. If you're as big as me, you're like a side screen anyway. So you don't want to be the reason why the batsman loses the ball. And if the batsman, first of all, if the captain sees an umpire walking over the red hat, I'd like to think the captain would say something to the umpire. But if the captain doesn't and you're batting and the umpire happens to have a red hat on, you, you're entirely within your rights to say you're impeding my vision. And but again, hopefully enough part would need to have that said to them. Sunscreen, again, I don't want to be a parent, but you might want to consider it. Holder for the bowler's cap or hat, one of these little fancy things if you have it, otherwise you just hold it in your hand. Pre-match activities, by the way, any questions so far? I want to move through this part of it kind of quickly because I want, we're probably going to have to spend some time on the back end talking about some of the new things. Any questions so far?